Land spell check here for Arrow in the Head's The Fucking Black Sheep, where we take a look at the opposing opinion of the genre's most divisive films. At the same time, I was also very, Jamil and I were very in touch with people in the actual virtual reality world. So sort of start with real and then take it off and extrapolate from there. I'd like to celebrate and look back at the catalog of the once promising filmmaker, Brett Leonard. For this month's Black Sheep entry, we will do a triple feature and dive into the untold horrors of the flash boom of 90s technology and spirituality. Let's give thanks to these three great yet underappreciated films, Hideaway, The Lawnmower Man, and Virtuosity. 95 was the year of Brett Leonard, Hideaway coming out in March, Virtuosity that August, and subsequently, his end where Virtuosity and The Lawnmower Man were both a Twilight Zone type of warning of unknown technology, Hideaway was a trippy spiritual thriller. Now, you may say I'm cheating as this doesn't fit with the other two, and though there is no advanced technology, there is a wild version of the afterlife, which is technically digital. Ah, semantics. A few years later, and I believe this would have a warmer reception, it has that great serial killer vibe that Seven became famous for. I miss Goldblum in serious leading roles, and his little eccentricities makes his relationship with his family more real. And yes, I'm, I'm glad he's getting a new comeback wave, but please, let's not have him be only weird and kooky, like we've made the later walk-in era. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. He's always been weird. Goldblum is spiritually connected to Jeremy and vice versa, witnessing the kills through the killer's eyes, and in a cool visual, becomes him, taking a page from Flatliners, the reboom of our interest in the unknown of death, and even borrowing some things from Kubler Ross's book of death and dying. Death and the effects it has and those brought back give this an advantage over the subgenre of straightforward serial killer films. Goldblum loses it over his visions of the dead, and it's a race to save his clueless daughter and convince everyone else he's not crazy. Though my least favorite of Leonard's best, it's still a great killer cat and mouse game with a spiritual bent. I have hope that one day this will find the audience it's always deserved. And how often do we get a shotgun wielding Goldblum? <laughs> Brett Leonard's first attempt at dissecting and discussing the new virtual world came with 1992's The Lawnmower Man. Dr. Lawrence Angelo was using his cocktail of drugs mixed with the use of VR to help Job, a grown man with the intellect of a child, become smarter and cure him of his disability. How you not play with that lawn anymore? You wanna get stupid? Jeff Fahey. Fahey. Jeff Fahey. I'm Jeff Fahey. Oh, Jesus Christ. The penis! We're not going to Guam, are we? I know that his simpleton portrayal may be seen as ham-fisted, but I really liked how he played it childlike and optimistic. Could we try it? Try it today, Terry? It's a hard sell, and no matter what actor tackles it, there's always room for outcry or dismissal. His talents really shine as he slowly develops into a god. He becomes stoic and calm, and I really wish he would get more credit for his flawless arc into the villain. Then there's Pierce Brosnan, my generation's Bond. His name's Bond. James Bond. Whether you think yours is the best or not, I believe you must always represent and defend your time period's Bond. Unless it's Lazenby. Can't we love them all? If this chick gets two dads, why can't I have five bonds? Pierce is on point here as well. Though a lot of his dialogue is a bit cheesy, he's believable in its delivery. He's constantly smoking and is even tough when he needs to be. An unrealistic portrayal of a doctor, sure, but enjoyable nonetheless. An early adapter of motion capture, one of the best parts about The Lawnmower Man is how it represented VR. This doesn't aim for any semblance of reality and presents it as a sober LSD experience. When Job transcends into a new form of consciousness, he becomes a virtual god. I love how creepy this version is, and I really wish we had more. Back before technology could do more with facial expressions, this was its peak. Its unrealistic look is far creepier and is hollow, soulless. I find these types way more unsettling. Between this, Virtuosity, and Robocop 2's Face of Kane, 
Kane. We were at the peak of eerie digital faces in an undisclosed time period. The future thought of by the 90s. Lieutenant Parker Barnes is serving a lengthy prison sentence for avenging the death of his wife and child while accidentally causing some collateral damage. Unlike the gyroscope use of VR that threatened the world in The Lawnmower Man, the virtual reality and virtuosity is industrial grade. Let's get down the brass tacks. Virtuosity is one damn fine film and is not only undeserving of its low scores, once again feeding my ever-growing doubt on the validity of their f***ing purpose, but its only real fault is bad timing. This would do far better if released today. The story has been done before. Only one guy could take the bad guy down and insert anti-hero. Where's my gun? But it's Leonard's love of the futuristic technology of VR and the idea of a real-life game boss being the antagonist that makes this stand above the rest. Russell Crowe was pretty new to the Hollywood game, but hit the ground running and gives one of his best, <laughs> yeah, that's right, one of his best performances. And that is saying something as he acts against the legend that is Denzel Washington. There are two main types of villains, the ones where you spend the entire runtime waiting and hoping for their eventual death, and the ones who are cool and engaging who you sort of secretly root for. Sid 6.7 leads the latter. Crow plays him cranked to 11. These guys are 11. Frantic, cracking jokes, constantly baiting Denzel. Am I, am I supposed to hate him? How's the wife and kid? Still dead, huh? With lines like that, I can't. Either way, Sid 6.7 basically plays the Joker. This guy is fun. <laughs> his motivations of mindless terror and his pure enjoyment of it makes him the perfect match. You just have to paint his face. And far better than this. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Look at his style, a love for beautiful suits. Love the suit. I haven't enjoyed gorgeous suits like this since Casino. And to meld his depravity with style, we get the perfect use of a Bee Gees song. Leonard shows an obvious passion for the technology of the future. His vision of the virtual world is far less psychedelic and more grounded this time around. Glitching issues, rehealing health, and Denzel's blood re-entering his body are cool little ways that we get to experience this wild computer world. The chemistry between the two leads is great, as one would expect, but the coolest and oddest thing I noticed on this latest rewatch is how relevant some things are. Of course, the badass VR system have aged as well as Y2K, it does land a few bullseyes now and then. Sid needs a big event to terrorize and he doesn't choose a concert, football, or even baseball. No, in this future, he picks the most popular sport, the UFC. Shit, relatively new in 95, uh, I'd like to give credit to this spot on prediction. I mean, they're really only missing ball Joe Rogan. Sid needs a constant audience. Brett Leonard accidentally stumbled into something relevant in 2018. Sid is obsessed with views and his passion to kill is directly tied to it. He wants an audience, demands it. As a society that's dependent on likes, views, and retweets, I can't help but notice Sid represents the worst of our current culture. Watching it now turns it into something far worse. Sid 6.7 is us. Leonard's passion for the budding technology of virtual reality may have been a miscalculation. And if his filmography after Virtuosity is any indication, it was. That's heartbreaking. Sure, we are only now starting to re-enter this wild world with the Oculus and others, but his intention was noble. I'm still surprised on how Hideaway hasn't reached any sort of cult status. As my boss put it perfectly, it gave us the shirtless Goldblum we all needed after Jurassic Park. Papa was alone stone. Yes. Brett may have been 23 years too early on the VR thing, but he was still tuned in to the social and ethical questions that arise with major jumps in tech. To the lawnmower man touching on video games obsessive nature, to virtuosity on social media before social media, and even a goddamn border crisis. Let me repurpose a quote from a tech savvy man. To best describe the madness that's encroaching with tech inseparable from daily life, I don't know where we're going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, and I hope you do, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Horror Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content. 
and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.